you go through Bettelsmith, and then into Alan Walsh Dulles, all working for Germany. And then you, then you can understand why the CIA have been uh, hugely ineffective at times. The same applies to MI6. Right. Time for tea. Time for tea. Oh, 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 oh. Time for tea. Mr. Shrimpton. There are no more, more questions. You can be first, talker after tea. first talker after tea. We all need a cup of tea. Harry, loudly. I can't hear a word. I'm a very old deaf man. Right, just a number of points. Number one, the, North, uh, the Korean War, the Sabres versus the League 15s, you were talking about mm -hmm. German involvement. Yep. The League 15s were powered by engines which were um, developed by Rolls Royce, they're actually. Yep. Engines, Correct. which the British Labour government gave to the Russians in 1948 and that had nothing to do with the Germans. Second, the TSR2 was not cancelled by Roy Jenkins, it was cancelled by uh, uh, Healy, the communist. Number three, the um, comets were not sabotaged, they, 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 fell, uh, they fell to earth through metal fatigue which was proved at uh, Farnborough with the extensive tests. Number yeah. four, um, Al-Qaeda is a fiction, and it's a fiction which uh, Robin Cook talked about, or wrote about, in the Guardian newspaper about a week before his death. So those are my four main points. Uh, yep. The fifth point, uh, so the Germans have got an intelligence service, so what? We've got an intelligence service. Mossad, Israelis have got one. The Americans have got one. Why shouldn't they have one? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, answering, uh, answering. Those lead back to Germany. AJ, AJP Taylor said, the eminent historian yep. said that Germany was not responsible for the Second World War. Well, <laughs> yes they did, they invaded Poland. Uh, this is a bit like a Faulty Towers episode. No, the Germans did start World War II by invading Poland. Uh, just, but... Yep. You can't go on talking, so you made your point. <laughs> right, five... I don't agree with you either. <laughs> five, five, five points. All countries are entitled to an intelligence service. It's what that intelligence service does. If that intelligence service starts corrupting uh, democracies, uh, kidnapping kiddies for sexual abuse to be fed to pedophile rings, starts smuggling in heroin and cocaine, uh, arranges mass murder, brings down airliners into national airspace, these are all acts of war. Uh, it, it's not what the intelligence... If the intelligence service confines itself, as ours do, largely, to collecting intelligence and analysing it, that's fine. So when you get into murder and sabotage and terrorism and bringing down skyscrapers, that you start to upset people. Uh, so I, I'm the last person to say Germany is not entitled to have an intelligence service. Of course she is. It's what she has done with it that the problem. Now, running through your other four points, I, well, I'll, I'll deal very quickly with the Robin Cook murder. I knew Robin Cook. I actually met him. And the last meeting I had with Robin Cook was a few weeks before his murder. Uh, he, he certainly didn't look like he was about to snuff it. Uh, yes, he was taken out. I, I've not have, I don't actually have any very clear picture about why he was taken out, or indeed who took him out. It's a very, it's a very odd business, the Cook murder. I do know he was murdered, and I do know the critical call is the one that came down to his cell phone. He had his cell phone on, he had signal, and he took a call shortly before he died. Um, and that call is quite critical, but I haven't seen the transcripts. Uh, I'm told that's, if, if, I mean, I haven't worked on the Cook murder. It, it, it's nobody, it, I wasn't a particular friend of Robin Cook. In fact, we were political enemies. Um, nobody's asked me to look at his murder. All I know is he was bumped off. Um, the, so I, I'm really not able to, to shed much further light on the motives for the Cook assassination. Uh, I think they're probably to do with Iraq, uh, but... Um, uh, who knows? Now, coming, starting on the, the three points, the aviation points, the Rolls-Royce Nen was sent to Russia by a German spy. Now, you can't understand the post-war Labour government unless you understand that Clement Attlee was a paedophile who had been recruited by German intelligence in his youth. I see uh, there are well-informed members of the audience nodding, and rightly so. Attlee worked for the Germans. The Labour Party is essentially 
a front for German intelligence. Keir Hardy worked for the Germans, Ramsay MacDonald worked for the Germans, Gordon uh, Lansbury, George Lansbury worked for the Germans. And the, you cannot understand the Labour Party, and I used to be in the party, I couldn't understand it at the time. Unless you understand the reasons why it was founded, it was founded to, uh, at a time when the Liberal Party split, the Germans took control of the Liberal Party when they started blackmailing Gladstone in the 19th century. When the Liberal Party split and the patriotic Liberals discovered what Gladstone had been up to and split and formed the Liberal Unionists, um, the Germans were worried about uh, keeping the Tory Party out of power and they theorised that they should swing Liberal votes to Labour and the Labour Party was created by German intelligence, in essence. And unless you were a German, uh, if you were in the loop if you were one of the Germans, you were a favoured son in the Labour Party and your career was assured of progress. If you were against, if you were a patriotic Brit, you might end up being assassinated or your career would go nowhere. Now, there was a key player in the German, in the Labour Party, uh, just at the end of World War I, called Galansk, who was assassinated. He was feared by the Germans as a potential rival to their people. Henderson was British and loyal. And you can't understand the huge battle between Henderson and Attlee without understanding that Attlee was a German spy. Now, Attlee went along with nationalisation, the health service, in order to make a mess of our economy. Uh, any intelligent person knew nationalisation was a nonsense. The reason he went along with it as an intelligent man was because he'd made a mess of things. So the Attlee government was essentially all about running Britain into the ground. And when he had nutters like Nye Bevan, who was his obsession on the health service and, and, and nationalising hospitals and wrecking all the health charities and all the rest of it, um, Attlee just went along with it. I mean, Nye to him was a useful idiot. When that wretched German spy, um, oh, what's his name, the, the Attorney General, Hartley Shawcross. Now, Hartley, I met Hartley Shawcross. Shawcross is a very interesting man. And my meeting with Shawcross, which was some years before he died, he was in his 90s, um, he... I, at that stage, was, a, was in the Labour Party. He was, I think, concerned about what I knew. He was keen to see me. The whole conversation with Shawcross was he was clearly trying to find out what did I know. Uh, and th there was something very strange about the man. Uh, it wasn't until I was told he was a German spy, verified it, that I realised the problems with Shawcross. Now, Attlee agreed to send the Nen to Russia at German request. You can't understand Russia without understanding that Lenin, Stalin, Beria, and Trotsky all reported to Germany and the Germans bankrolled the Russian Revolution in order to get Russia out of World War I. And the Germans set up Soviet intelligence. The NKV, the OGPU, the GPU, NKVD, MVD, KGB, all controlled by the Germans until the huge bust-up when the Russians discovered Stalin was a German spy and had him executed. And Stalin, I can tell you, was in the... It was, I mean, I, I've met people who knew Stalin. Marcus Wolf knew Stalin. Stalin was, was quite healthy up until a couple of weeks before he popped his clogs. He popped his clogs after Russian intelligence sensibly arranged for uh, his quack to bump him off. Now, the good guys in Russian intelligence, the guys I talked to, are the GRU. The bad guys tended to be the MVD, the NKVD, the KGB, because they were run by the Jerrys. Burgess, Philby and McLean were all German spies which explains why Philby, this alleged communist, was so keen on his bootmaker and, and, and you know, uh, loved his club and missed, uh, missed cricket and all that. Uh, the, the idea of Kim Philby as a communist is just hilarious to anybody who knew him. I did not, but I know a number of people who did, and I can assure you Philby was no more a communist than Karl Marx, right. also a German spy. Right. So the MiGs, the Rolls-Royce name, was sent to the, to, the, to the Russians at German request, flown by German pilots in the Korean War, the MiG-15 was actually designed by Messerschmitt. It was the Messerschmitt design, which McCoy and Gurevich, uh, uh, in the interest of, you know, uh, uh, you know ego trip, uh, they were able to put their names on it, but it was actually a German design, and the MiG-15 design goes back to m work that Messerschmitt was doing uh, at the end of uh, World War II. So that's the Sabres. Um, the Sabre, by the way, was a wonderful aircraft. My father flew Sabres, spoke very highly of the Sabre. He flew, flew them in the RAF, wonderful machine. Uh, Jenkins and the TSR-2, Healy took the blame. There's always been, I know Dennis Healy, at least I bumped into Dennis, we don't like each other, but he, he's a perfectly nice chap. I wouldn't say for, any, for one moment that Dennis Healy was a German spy. I think Dennis's big problem is that he was set up and he largely took the fall for TSR2, but the moving spirit in the Wilson administration was Jenkins. Remember, in the G Wilson government, the German spies were Harold Wilson, uh, Roy Jenkins, who had been at Bled.